Mike's YouTube channel.、Uh, subscribe if you have a chance. It takes some time to make high quality, succinct tutorial videos. Would really appreciate your support.、Um, today we want to talk about command line cheat sheet for data scientists, and this is reposted from Unique Text Medium channel.、Um, And we thought we were gonna do a video because sometimes it's just very easy、um, and helpful to do a video demonstration, and it will make things much easier to consume.、Um, so here we go, and and let me make new tutorial folder for this. Okay, so I just、uh, did a couple of things here. Is I changed directory into the tilde slash downloads folder. That's where、uh, you see those downloads and document folders on Macs. And Windows is slightly different, and the commands are slightly different. So this is、uh, mostly Mac. And then I use make directory, which is make dir,、um, and it, the directory is called command. And then I'm changing. Um, into that, and if I do ls, which is list all the files in the directory, we can see、um, there is not much going on.、Um, there is nothing. Sometimes you can list the hidden files.、Um, also, you can see not much. So,、um, wonderful. That's exactly what we want. And here.、Um, When you read our tutorials, always ignore the dollar sign. That means it is a command line. It just separates it from a few other prefixes, and we、we'll、explain more. So this is、um, we're gonna talk briefly about how to set up an environment variable.、Um, envi environment variables by convention are capitalized. So. And there should be no space. And now, if I print this environment variable, this dollar sign is needed, and it it gives the answers back to me. This is very helpful when you are working on an open source project. You have some private keys or some kind of setting that you know personal names and email addresses that you only want to live in your local environment. Um, and you don't want to publish that into your script or onto your GitHub. This is very useful, and Google Cloud use that、uh, for a lot of configuration. Often you will see set project ID, and then you can use that dollar sign variable name to do anything you want. And in general, when you do a git、um, init, you will see、uh, when you do git init, and now you do the ls dash a. You can see hidden files. Hidden files are generally preceded with a dot,、um, so dot git is hidden. And now, if you do git status,、um, obviously it says nothing to commit.、Uh, usually, the first thing you want to do is create、um, a readme file. So you use the command touch、um, the name of your file.、It、just happen to be readme is capitalized. I guess it's so. Catch attention, say read me first. I don't know. I I actually have no idea. Um. So, um. Dot md md stands for markdown, and now if I do ls, and、uh, this file exists, and I can do two things to it. I can just view it by cat using cat, and、uh, there's nothing in there. I can also use the nano editor, um. And this opens up、um, uh, an in command line editor. I want to do Control X to exit because there's nothing nothing to save. It just exited right away. If I have made changes, it will ask me to confirm that save. So that was Control X to quit.、Um, You can so we talk about this already. Make make directory, change directory, cd tilde tilde is sort of like the the main thing. Okay,、um, and then、um, basically now if we、uh, we talk about nano, 
And what's really cool is we can do two ways. There are two ways to change the file, right? If we do nano again, and I say, uh, you know, readme, this is a way to write a heading in markdown file. So control X on Mac and confirm with yes, and then hit enter to exit. And now if I cat this same file, you can use the up arrow to revisit previous commands. Um, I will see this, um, which makes sense. Uh, it is not interpreted in our command line. I'm not reading it as a markdown file, so it's displaying the raw information inside. And now um, I can echo some messages into it. So I can say um, first line. and then my file name. You can always use tab to auto com complete. Let's see if it works. Yeah, it absolutely works in this. Uh, it's unique and it works in this folder. So now if I use up arrow to revisit what I've typed in, uh, you can see the first line is now there. Um, and also uh, you notice that it's appended to the very end of the file. Uh, type um, control C to exit any weird prompt. Um, so good to go. Um, this is a Python. Uh, this is how you run a Python script. And this is sort of how you run a JavaScript script too. You just use, if you have node JS install, you say node my JavaScript file name dot JS. Um, but remember, we can use touch to quickly create a script. So I can just call it my script.py, and then um, I can echo something into it, right? Um, so, so my script.py, and then I can say, okay, I'm just gonna print um, hello world. Um, cat that file to just make sure we did everything right. So I'm just going to use cat and my script, my and tab to auto complete. Okay. Everything looks good. Um, let's see, yeah, it just runs that it's not printing anything raw. It's actually running that script and the script was to print out hello world. Um, you can use pipe. This is kind of cool because, um, so if, um, I'm going to use conda list, which is anaconda. Um, it should be a really huge list. Actually, uh, a better way would be conda env list. So this is a list of my environments. They were kind of slow. So I use command A to command C. Control C to exit the loop earlier because I don't want to wait. Uh, so imagine I I have this really long list, right? So I can say conda activate. This is anaconda. It's a environment for data scientists, and we can definitely do a com a tutorial on that later. We have a command line cheat sheet for just that. So conda activate. Um, let's say deep learning. You can see what's in my deep learning directory. And now that I can do a kind of list, it's better. It's, it shows a list of the packages that are installed. Obviously this is really, really long, right? So um, what I can do, which is really cool, is I didn't used to know this. I got better with command line. <laughs> um, sort of a really pro tip here. But if you come from the more traditional programming side, this is probably no brainer if you work with Linux and other systems before. Um, so I can say conda list, which is going to list all the packages just like what you see above. So first of all, I can clear it, which would be nice. Uh, conda list, and I'm going to pipe the result into a grep function, which is a search function. And I'm going to search for PyTorch to see if I have PyTorch installed. And this way I don't have to manually Oops, I think that was completely hidden uh, out of the screen. So I used, com uh, sorry, I used conda list pipe and I 
type that, that means I'm typing the result from this command. I'm using that result. And what am I doing with that result? I'm searching command line search for the keyword PyTorch, which is kind of nice. It shows me two things from the PyTorch library. Uh, one is PyTorch itself, one is Torch Vision, which is super important for uh, computer vision, image recognition, and uh, image classification, and it has all these pre-built models in it. So, so that was really cool, um, long list. And the other cool thing you can do is, you know, imagine you really don't like to use command line that much, you're just using it out of necessity. You can always do command F on Mac and you can search for it. It's not as nice, but it, it kind of works. Um, cool, it's still a little hard to read, um, but it's human readable. Uh, real quick, uh, then this one is not optional. So when you are doing Jupyter Notebook, when you're using Jupyter Notebook, that is something data scientists use all the time. Um, when you use that, go ahead and watch our YouTube video here. Um, or uh, it's on this channel, you just search command line and this time for Jupyter Notebook. Or just uh, the thing you wanna think about is that it is almost the same. There are some limitations what you can do, but if you add what's called the band sign, which is the um, exclamation mark, you can run command line uh, commands right there um, in your Jupyter Notebook. That is really useful when you are trying to preview a module, you wanna see what is the code written in the module, what kind of helper libraries you're using so you can actually cat the actual script or more often than not, you're catting or nano reading or listing your current working directory. You might have a data file there. You wanna see how it is laid out, the data file structure. You wanna traverse that a little bit. So that is super useful. And in the next episode, we'll probably talk about Anaconda Chishi. Subscribe, really appreciate it. Any subscriber is great support for our channel. And by having more subscribers, we get more benefits and we can provide better videos. So thank you so much.